Good morning from the San Rafael Swell near Hanksville in Utah, just below Temple Mountain, which has a long history of being mined for radioactive materials. I was here about two weeks ago trying to climb to the top of Temple Mountain, and the whole thing of trying to climb a radioactive mountain really caught my curiosity. So here I am, back again to explore it some more. And we will start the tour right here, of these old stone buildings that likely uh, housed the workers for this mine. The scientists get a lot of credit and movies made about them for their discoveries, but what about the miners? I mean, these guys out here firsthand digging this stuff up. Probably very little concern for health and safety back then. Are they not the true heroes? So before I take a look inside this structure, I want to say that I do have a, a Geiger counter with me. This is by no means a high-end model. It's one of the cheapest ones that money can buy, but I'm hoping I'll get some interesting readings on this today. But get an average around 30 CPM, which is like perfectly normal. So let's take a quick look in here. Ah, nothing unusual. You never know, maybe they were storing ore in uh, these huts. So our next stop on this tour is to hike right up there where you can see some adits and tailings pouring over that ridge. So the main concern when hiking around any kind of abandoned mine, but radioactive mines especially, is just like breathing in the dust. So Rocco's gonna have to wait this one out in the van as she stands only about six inches above the ground and she always has her nose in everything. But I'm already getting like slightly elevated readings at the base of this tailings pile, but still pretty low, nothing to be concerned about. There are no warning signs as you drive in here to say that there could be some danger. and Also, this is a really popular ATV and dirt bike destination where people are ripping up and down these trails. So it kind of makes you wonder. Okay, yeah. Alarms are going off here. It's not a good sign. Look at this. <laughs> not a great place to set up camp here. I had to turn the alarm off on this thing. So you would probably be listening to it all day long. So you can see that yellow colored ore there. I believe that's carnotite, which is like a low grade uh, uranium or vanadium. That's the highest reading I've got yet. So I should try and explain the numbers that I was getting during this hike. Like 2000 CPM is a significant number, but generally considered to be safe in a short amount of exposure like I was getting during this hike. There's actually antique dinnerware available that you can find that gives off higher levels of radiation than what I found during this hike. And another thing to be aware of, it can be a bad idea to stand directly in front of the adit because if a, a gust of wind were to come up out of the mine, it could coat you head to toe in radioactive dust, which would not be good. And I also had to make sure to uh, clean off my boots really 
good before getting back in the van because I didn't want to bring radioactive dirt back into my home. This looks like the end of the road here. Another sealed up at it. Even if one was open, you wouldn't want to go in there because chances are it's filled with radon gas. Although some people around the world and in the state of Montana would argue that occasionally dosing yourself with radon gas has health benefits, but I'm not gonna try that today. All right, carrying on with this tour of Temple Mountain. I'm gonna go further up the road here and then hike up the mountain itself and try to reach that big open at it. It's uh, high up on the mountain. Let's see if we can look around there. If there ever was a mountain that you'd expect to be radioactive, I'd, I'd say it's definitely this one. Totally fits the picture. But away we go, left Rocco behind again. We'll hike up on top of the ridge line. Take a look around. Shout out to Radioactive Drew. His channel was very helpful and informative with my decision to come out here today. He's actually made a few videos in this, this area. But if you're into radioactive exploration like this, I recommend checking out his channel. But for me, this might be the, the one and only time that I do something like this. From hiking around in these areas, I've always kind of wondered, like, what is this green colored rock? So it's neat to finally confirm what it actually is. But I don't think that was what they're actually mining. That's more so a sign that there could be like the high grade pitch blend further in if you dig for it. That's like a dark colored black, bubbly looking rock. So if you see something that looks like that, don't sit on it and take your lunch break. You might wind up with fried beans. So that's the added up there that I'm trying to reach. That must be like one of the most extreme locations for a mine on this whole entire mountain. They must have had some kind of uh, tram system to get the ore down from here. I didn't notice there's actually two adits over there. Let's see if we can find a way across this. This might be autonite here. If I had a UV light, then I, I could check it and see if it fluoresces. There's some big chunks. Well, <laughs> Not going in there. See if I can get a look though. Yeah, time for me to get out of here, but there is one more stop that I like to make on this tour, and it's down there. Those ones are wide open. If you're feeling super cheeky breaky, you can go right in there. Not for me though. Now, the whole perimeter of this mountain is riddled in adits, but I'm not getting any kind of significant readings on the Geiger during like any of this hike. It's only when I'm close to the adits, so I think it's perfectly fine and safe to come up here, hike and take in the view. You can try to climb up to the summit if you're feeling really ambitious. I believe the route is rated 5.5, uh, five, but on like the worst kind of rotten rock imaginable. So I'm not sure if I'd ever do that myself. But what I'm trying to get to, I gotta go back down around and over there. There's another fire ring and campsite right there in slightly elevated levels.
So I'm trying to get to that right there. Almost as if someone perched it there to put it on display. I think I'll have to uh, scramble up through there to reach it. Yeah, like I said, this is the first and last time that I ever meddle around and explore something like this. I'm sure I'm gonna get some interesting comments on this video. But the scary thing to me though is like people coming out here and not knowing what this used to be. Like going into an open adit or camping where those fire rings are, the tailings pile. So at the very least, hopefully this video is just a little piece of information to carry around. And here we are, the grand finale of this tour around Temple Mountain. This is an early 1940s M3 half track. What an absolute unit. They definitely built things stronger back then. Gonna have to do a full walk around. We gotta see every square inch of this. This is incredible. Now the radioactive green, definitely a suitable color choice. Well, that concludes the tour today. I'm gonna go wash my clothes, have a shower, take my dog for a walk, and make sure that I don't glow in the dark. But hope you guys enjoyed this episode, this tour of Temple Mountain. Hope everyone's doing good. I'll see you in the next one.